Pinky and the Brain issue 4. Pinky says it's terrible and Brain's actually concerned, which is pretty nice of him. Pinky assumes that someone made a hat out of a real mouse because he found a Mickey Mouse hat. What's really confusing is that the hat is small enough for a mouse. So how does it exist if Brain didn't make it? Or else he would have said he did. Brain says they're going to start their own psychic readers hotline. How? But the only advice given will be that success can only be achieved by making him the ruler. He's really desperate if he thinks that'll work with even one person. It's nice of Pinky to compliment him. Then he says he tried it already. How did Brain forget then? Brain somehow doesn't try the plan again, but this time by following the advice Pinky's giving him to hire a celebrity spokesperson. And say so he decides to create a laundry product that promotes static cling in an attempt to get everyone stuck to each other. Pinky says that plan failed too because of people from a nudist colony exposing the operation. It's shocking that the comic could reference that. How did Brain forget that he did this plan already? Well, Pinky didn't. Pinky's lucky enough to easily make himself laugh with puns, and Brain's nice enough to humor him by sarcastically saying it's amusing. He says they could stage a fake alien invasion to make people flee the centers of government in a panic. How did he forget that plan happened, too? Brain gets offended and wonders if he's being told that he can't think of any good ideas anymore. Clearly, Pinky didn't say that, and Brain's the one wondering that instead. I guess Brain keeps a diary and that's why I can keep count of how many failures he's had. Eventually, he admits he's a failure, and it's nice of Pinky to say that he isn't. Technically, he is a failure at his goal, but he's still an amazing inventor with a lot of potential. Pinky is sweet enough to comfort him and say that it's not his fault all of those plans failed. Even though it probably is. He somehow is confident enough to think that his plans would succeed if he thought of them. Which he'd only do if he was smart like Brain is. I wonder how he still has confidence after all of the times Brain abused him and called him an idiot. He asks if he could come up with a plan instead. Pinky says they could buy up all of the world's chocolate because people can't live without it. They'd need more money than they'd ever get to have. But it goes to show you how silly Brain's plans sound that Pinky's plans don't really sound different than his. He could be intentionally making a silly plan just to make fun of him and we wouldn't be able to tell. Pinky says that all they have to do is get a leprechaun's pot of gold to have all the money they need. Even ignoring the fact that that doesn't exist, there's no way even that pot of gold would give him enough money to do that. Although since Santa and his elves exist in this series, maybe leprechauns do and Pinky isn't crazy for believing in them. It's amusing how Brain reacts with sarcasm before eventually saying no. Pinky says please a thousand times until he humors him. I guess he was so distracted by him saying please that he couldn't think about a erase his memory of the plan he had. Pinky says Brain will feel better when it's his plan that fails. They go into a red can with the label Zippy Express on it and get thrown out of a car onto a sign that says Welcome to Ireland. And the editor translates it into French. When translated literally, it asks if you'd like a drink. I feel like them getting here this way was too convenient. It'd make more sense for them to get to a place really quickly if they flew there in a spaceship Brain made. Pinky says they have to make a rainbow appear. Brain doesn't even bother saying how he could do that with cloud seeding and said waste time saying that Pinky's plan failed and trying to get him to go home. Pinky brings out a tape recorder and is asked what he's doing with it. Pinky tells him to remember that plan with the potato things and says that Brain forgot that Irish weather is splishy and icky, which Brain translates to mean cold and moist, of course. Pinky says that all they have to do is play a tape loudly. The tape has a presidential speech on it. And Pinky says that the tape's making hot air. Because he takes things too literally since he's so young and won't bother educating himself. I do like this joke though. How in the world did he make a rainbow that way? I guess there was going to be a rainbow anyways no matter what Pinky did because it already just rained. Brain says that mortals can't see leprechauns without a magical talisman like a four-leaf clover. I didn't know that. That's a talisman? How did he know that when it's outside of his field of interest? He apologizes to Pinky 
And Piggy says that they always keep going on brains plans until some spectacular climax. He says they'll have to make their own lucky charm out of the lucky string he thought to bring. There's no reason his lucky string would work. It's nice to see that stories around Pinky's plans are just as engaging, if not even more so because it's unpredictable. This is easily the best issue so far. They walk for miles, and go figure, they somehow find a pot of gold. It was predictable that Pinky's plan would have some success, because that's how it was in the show, too. And of course, even though it's unrealistic, the pot of gold is from a leprechaun. If Santa can exist in the show, then why not leprechauns too? No wonder he thinks anything's possible. The leprechaun uses magic to fling them away. It's a shame neither of them thought to bring technology to deal with the leprechaun, like a sun gun. And he threatens to turn them into horseradish of all things. How did he come up with that? And in a blatant, insulting deus ex machina, the leprechaun believes that they're leprechauns when he's lied to about it, even though they look like mice. The leprechaun totally buys that that's how American leprechauns look, when you'd think he'd know better because he's a leprechaun with omnipotent powers. So leprechauns would already know how American ones look through word of mouth and magic. They could have their own form of telecommunications because of magic. Instead he buys this because the writer wrote himself into a corner and they ended up being shown around the village that somehow no mortal found before on a fully explored continent. Pinky ends up thinking that he's letting Brain down because Brain wanted Pinky's plan to fail and it's working. Is he going to sabotage the plan even though Brain reassured him? That'd be stupid. Somehow there's a pot of gold so big that the leprechaun who founded this village couldn't lift it by magic. I guess leprechaun magic only has a very limited range of magic. And the pot of gold was made to be bigger than that range. Leprechauns aren't witches. So maybe it's plausible that they wouldn't be like them. But it's a bit confusing because in the naughty Sabrina comic, witches can't undo the spells of leprechauns unless they find their gold. So leprechauns are more powerful than them. With these guys, their magic range is smaller. Piggy warns Brain that he can't get his confidence back if his plan actually works. Even though Brain's already acting like he's feeling better. Brain says he'll take over the plan to make sure it ends successfully. I get why he thinks he should do that because he's a genius. But that'll doom the plan to failure if the logic is that his plans always fail and Pinky's plans work out from dumb luck. Why is Pinky's text bubble not connected to him? And why doesn't Brain react to what he said? The leprechaun Angus asks where their gold is, and Pinky should know better than to say they don't have gold and came here to get some. Because leprechauns are known for having gold. But they have to be truthful. Brain tells the leprechauns that he lost his gold because of America's tax laws make him go broke. Then the king of the leprechauns approaches them himself. And there's even more nonsense because somehow leprechauns can only get their gold back by undergoing three trials of worthiness. That sounds magical. So at that point, why doesn't anyone just cast a quick spell to send the leprechauns gold back to them or use a magical item instead of having to complete three trials to execute a line of magical code that sends them gold. If they can already turn something into horseradish, that means they can change the atomic number of something in general, so they could just summon gold from air. This is such a nonsensical route for the story to take. The story had such potential. The first trial is that Brain has to prove his speed by stealing a whisker off a wild boar. So Pinky gets told to distract the boar while Brain would sneak up behind it to do it. Why does the trial allow two people at once to do it then? Even though Brain gets bitten, somehow the leprechaun says both of them pass the trial. And somehow Brain is perfectly fine in the next panel. Again, I have to assume they're able to heal really fast with nanomachines of brains and making them regenerate cells. I'll assume this from now on, and it works because he's smart. The next trial requires them to hold a potato over their head and recite a limerick. The dumbest part is that it has to be a clean limerick. And since they're assumed to be leprechauns, they aren't told what that means, let alone what a limerick is. So they're lucky they know. Pinky throws a potato to make just Brain hold it, when he's usually supposed to be super loyal to him, so he would just help him hold it. They should have to do this together. Otherwise, how do they both pass? How did Pinky pass the previous trial without getting a whisker himself? 
It's not like the ants. So the only way Brank could carry a potato is if he made himself unusually strong, but was somehow unable to make himself stronger than this. As if he couldn't get access to enough super strength juice. He can't think of a clean limerick, and almost says the one about the man from Nantucket. I guess Pinky told him those limericks, because he's too sophisticated for them. Then he says a limerick based on his own life, which makes it more believable. And he passes the test somehow, even though the potato crushes them. Then they get told to be brave and conquer a foe. Pinky gets hit and so does Brain, and somehow they pass the trial even though they didn't conquer their foe. Brain would have if he had brought a ray gun or something. That's a trial that definitely doesn't make sense to have been passed. One medic later, they get given new pots of gold. I thought the leprechauns were going to try to help get the gold they lied about having back by backing them up as an army. What is so special about the pots of gold if they can be replaced? They're literally just their money? Someone tells them that mortals see their gold only if they believe it's gold, and if they ever doubt that, it's dirt. He talks as if it's twigs and leaves, no good for paying taxes otherwise. Why would this be the case? If they can turn people into horseradish, they could actually make dirt gold. A leprechaun wouldn't want mortals to believe they have gold because they'd have to deal with mortals trying to steal their gold. Then they're given a magic shamrock because they can't carry all the gold on their backs. They're told they can hold it over the pots to make them regain their normal size. So they go to something with the note Zippy Express on it and the plane takes off, letting them leave Ireland ridiculously easily. Brain says it's real gold shrunken. Pinky says it's dirt and twigs because that's what the leprechaun said. But why did that leprechaun say that in the first place? Especially since he thought they were leprechauns, so they thought they knew that. And clearly it's not dirt and twigs anymore. And for no reason whatsoever, it turns into dirt and twigs because of what Pinky just said, even though Brain wasn't calling them dirt and twigs. Even though Brain said he believed in it. Then Pinky asks him if he feels better because his plan failed. Their former gold expands to a larger size, because the shrink spell stops working on it for no reason. It's so arbitrary that the spell exists, so I can't take it seriously. Brain points out the obvious that Pinky sabotaged the plan, and says the plan looked like it would work, but he should have known I had no chance anyways. Pinky cries, and Brain actually admits that he didn't mean to screw things up, and puts his hand on his shoulder, and reassures him that he restored his confidence. It's a good thing the show made it clear that he values Pinky as a friend, because he's the only talking mouse he knows, who's constantly with them. So I know there's a good reason why he doesn't just get rid of Pinky immediately. This issue by Bobby and David Wace had Pinky have a plan, but its failure was completely arbitrary. And since there's no reason that a tape recording would actually produce a rainbow, it shouldn't have gotten off the ground. Pinky's plan the show made a better episode because it was believable that Pinky's money-making plan got off the ground, and actually came close to taking over a country instead of the whole thing clearly being pointless. It made no sense that a leprechaun would believe that obvious mice were leprechauns, and it was nonsensical that they had to complete trials to be given pots of gold if the leprechauns felt so bad for them. If the leprechaun's gold is replaceable, then why would they need to do this instead of having to go to work for a while to earn the gold, like anyone else with a job, if they think they have to earn it? There's no reason a leprechaun's gold would just be dirt and twigs that only stays transformed into gold if mortals believe it's gold. Most mortals don't believe in leprechauns, so all of their gold would be worthless, and they wouldn't stand for that and keep casting the spell like that. I assume most of the gold of leprechauns Mortals don't even know about it anyways, so there'd be no belief to make them stay gold in the first place. They have to cast a spell like that on purpose for it to be the case. But if they can turn a person to horseradish, there's no reason they would have to settle for a temporary transformation spell based on belief. Pinky merely saying it's actually dirt wouldn't turn the gold into dirt because Brain kept talking as if he believed in it. Well, it was foreshadowed that Pinky would ruin the plan because he thought his plan had to fail to give Brain his confidence back. That shouldn't be why it failed, because Brain made it clear that the only thing that mattered to him was whether he gets to take over the world or not. 
he doesn't need his confidence in whether he can do that back if he's already on the way to achieving it successfully. And it's always been obvious that he's overconfident and it backfires. So humility would only help him, not make him bad as a ruler. And they should have known that buying all of the chocolate was impossible anyways because they're just two mice who can't teleport and would only have so much gold. So they would have given up on the plan in a month or so anyways.